Steel, the so-called backbone of America, is suffering. The credit crisis has hit the industry hard. Steel plants across the country are hanging on till the federal stimulus package kicks in with its over $100 billion for building things like highways, bridges, and power grids, and its promise to get workers back into their hard hats. As we first reported in February, the package includes a Buy American clause that the steel industry fought hard for. It says any infrastructure project paid for with stimulus dollars must use steel made in the USA and not cheaper imports. The whole purpose of your stimulus package, and it's the right purpose, mm -hmm. is to stop the bleeding of jobs and to create new jobs here in America, not overseas, not in China, not in Europe. Dan D'Amico is the CEO of Nucor, the biggest steel maker in the United States, with 18 plants all across the country, including this one outside Blytheville, Arkansas, along the Mississippi River. Plant manager Doug Jellison told us Nucor has revolutionized the way steel is made. So what is this stuff? It could be old barges, it could be from, you know, old buildings. This stuff is like, you know, old barrels or you'll see some wheels. Instead of using expensive iron ore to make steel, Nucor uses mostly scrap. Anything with steel, like crushed cars or old washing machines. We are the largest recycler in North America. Over the last five years, this plant, like the U.S. steel industry as a whole, saw its profits soar. By mid-2008, Nucor had hit an all-time high. But then things changed overnight. Just what? Just went off just the Just off a cliff. You it, went from feast to famine like that? When the credit crisis hit, the water shut off. The flow of money shut off. It was like dominoes. Ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. I've never seen anything like this, and no one else has in our lifetime. That was in October. Clients from home builders to car makers simply vanished. Up till then, the plant was on all cylinders with tons of scrap cooking round the clock seven days a week. Curiously, they call this a mini mill, though there's nothing mini about it. It's a mini mill because they use a jolt from electrodes in a small furnace instead of heating a huge one with coal. It's not quite fireworks, but it's right, right. you'll see fireworks in a minute. The boom, and yes, it was scary, happens when electricity hits the metal. The process is run from a control room called the pulpit. The operator raises the temperature to nearly 3,000 degrees and pours the witch's brew into a cauldron. That's the steel? That's the steel. Wow. No, we, no the cauldron is transported to something called a caster runout where the molten steel is molded and cut into beams. So this will go into the bridges and the buildings. This is it. This is steel. Mini mills can make steel more cheaply than it used to be made, more quickly and more efficiently. We can literally start and stop our process like you flip a light switch on and off. So we can run full out, and then if the order's back off and we need to shut down, we just turn the light switch off. And since October, that's what they've had to do. The phones just stopped. The phones just stopped. Nucor's employees watched helplessly as the number of new steel orders plummeted. It just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. How far down did it get? Did it go to zero? It, one, one week we actually had a negative. Next week we had negative sales because of the cancellations. Mm -hmm. Christmas was coming around the corner, you know. Guys were planning and mm. it just, just died. Just boom. Boom, all at once. These mounds of scrap usually clear out in a week. But this apocalyptic landscape has been sitting here just like this for months. Other steel companies have dealt with a slowdown by padlocking plants and sending workers home. Have you closed any of your no. plants? Not one plant is no. closed down? No. Instead, the plants are running at 50%. Facilities look like ghost towns. And yet, while well over 25,000 steel workers have been laid off around the country, not a single worker at Nucor has. 
that's the big difference in, in us sitting here and you interviewing some other steel company. Because when we go through the gate, we don't have to worry about losing our job. Which isn't to say they aren't feeling the pain. With all of Nucor's plants non-union, the salaries of its more than 20,000 employees are tied to productivity. And productivity is now half. Tell us how much your pay has been cut from, say, a year ago. Uh, 50 percent. 50 percent, wow. About 50 to 55 percent. That's about where I am, about 50 percent. That's where I'm at also, 50 percent. Now they're dipping into savings, delaying retirement, cutting back on everything, from food to the collection plate at church. Jeremy Davis, a coal saw operator, was making $87,000 a year. It's bad. You, you've set your bills, you've set your, you know, your lifestyle around what you're making. Right. And so when it's cut in half, you know, first thing you have to do is start asking yourself, you know, where can I make cuts? Uh, we don't go out to eat no more. You know, it's, we cook at home, we eat peanut butter and jelly and <laughs> ham sandwiches for lunch. As opposed to the caviar you were eating. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, he was eating turkey. <laughs> as tough as it is, guys, we'll come through it better than anybody else. No times are tough. In pep talks, the employees keep asking, when will the tough times end? Is it more than a year from now? <sighs> a lot depends on the stimulus package, and I hate to rely on it. The, the, the government to do these things for us. But the reality is it's that bad and we have no choice. It's not the first time steel has turned to Washington. A decade ago, the industry was on its knees with competition from cheap imports and unsustainable retirement costs. For every steelmaker on the job, the company had to pay six to eight retired workers. The industry begged for a bailout. But whatever you were asking for, Washington said no, and the industry collapsed practically. We had 32 steel companies, 32 in this country, go into bankruptcy. But when you got... in excess of 100,000 jobs disappearing. Under bankruptcy, the companies shed their health care and retirement obligations. The industry bounced back because of consolidations, automation, and China. I would definitely say that the fact that the um, infrastructure was growing at the rate that it was growing um, in China and around the world, um, because of that, we had four or five really good years. But now, steel is at the mercy of Washington again. Strong Buy America provisions. D'Amico lobbied hard and passionately for the Buy American clause in the stimulus package. What we're saying is, listen. Yes, Buy America benefits the steel industry in the United States, absolutely. But what we're saying also is, might that concept not also benefit the U.S. economic engine, get it started again? You're setting up, you're begging other countries to retaliate against us. It's, uh, it's not true. It's the counter-argument. It's, it's all garbage. As you well know, I'm not telling you anything. No, you... People can say whatever they want. What we have around the world all right, is a trade war against the United States that we have not showed up for. Like you know what? Like, You're a, you are a protectionist. No, I am not a protectionist. Well, you sound like not a protectionist. Not in the sense of the tone that you're using. Okay? Sounds like it. I am a person who says there's no such thing as free trade. Free trade is an academic luxury the real world doesn't enjoy. If you want to study it at Harvard, study it at Harvard. It doesn't work in the real world. It has no application. For the United States to turn significantly inward and protectionist at this time, would be like pouring gasoline on the recessionary fires that are burning. Jim Owens is the CEO of Caterpillar. He worries that Buy American will end up costing more jobs than it will protect. Most of these are exported. Yes, this is a, this is a 777 truck. In our uh, mining truck line, this is one of the smaller trucks. This is a, this is a 100 ton truck. This is one we of the smaller to, trucks. Let me just show everybody ton. the scale here. This is one of the smaller trucks. How much of your product is sold in the United States versus the rest of the world? If you got right down to new machine and new engine sales, it's roughly 75, 25. 75 so, outside the country? Yes. Caterpillar made $16 billion last year by selling its heavy excavators and dump trucks overseas. Because of the worldwide recession, Caterpillar has already announced 24,000 layoffs. 
it's another company desperate for the infrastructure portion of the stimulus package. But it's also counting on other stimulus packages in China, South America, and Europe. That is, unless they retaliate. If we have a Buy America clause, other countries are going to have a Buy China, Buy Europe, Buy Brazil clause, and they're going to discriminate against our exported products. Look, look how thick this blade is. This is just this is a huge one, uh, hunk of steel. 75% of the steel in Caterpillar trucks is American-made. If the company can't sell its earth movers and mining tractors overseas, it'll buy less steel. Jim Owen says that not only his workers, but steel workers will be hurt by Buy American. If some of these other countries look upon it as a hostile act, um, and we're talking about China and Russia. We are the largest consumer in the world of Chinese-made products. They need us as much as we need them. He says the real hostile act is China subsidizing its steel industry. In January, Chinese steel plate cost half what American plate cost. D'Amico claims that allows China to dump or sell its steel below cost. Taxpayers want to know why they're going to have to have their money go for something more expensive when they could get steel from China for much less. Why, should, why shouldn't we get the bargain? It won't be cheaper from China if it's not dumped and it's not subsidized, okay? which, is, or, which are both illegal according to the international trading practices. In today's environment, when you're running your operations at 50% of capacity, do you really think you're not going to no, be competitive? Uh, Please join me in welcoming our 44th president to Peoria. President Obama visited Caterpillar in February to promote the stimulus package. But Jim Owen said even with the stimulus, he may have to lay off more workers before seeing a turnaround. And he told us that any gain from domestic spending may not be enough if Buy American triggers a global trade war. What happens if all these uh, countries that sell steel to us, mm -hmm. China, Russia, Brazil, say, okay, well, we're just not going to buy Caterpillar products. We're not going to take in John Deere products. We're not going to take in GE products. The only trade war that's going on is being waged on us. And when you don't hold people accountable for playing by the rules they agreed to, to have access to your market, you're basically saying anything goes. That's garbage. That's baloney. The American people won't stand for it. The Buy American Clause mandates the use of American-made steel unless that violates U.S. trade agreements. So steel from Canada and Europe can be used, but steel from major competitors China and Russia will be locked out.